Are we live? Maybe. It says I'm live. All right. I think we're good. Um, got the professional mic all tucked away in the pocket right there. Let's see if you guys can hear me. I'm trying to stream and watch everything. I'm not going to look down at this all night. I promise you. Just going to check. You guys tell me you hear anything. All right. Can you hear me? If you can't, I'm going to go rip out this mic and just go with what I have. I swear. I you hear me now? You hear me now? Too low, super low, muffled. Volume is low, but I can hear you. Super low volume. All right, well, we'll try one more time. Going on over there. Hopefully you could hear me now. Could you hear me now? I sound like the guy. Good, better. Oh, here we go. Much better, a little echo. I don't know about the echo. All right, turn your speakers down, I guess. Turn your headset down if it's bad, if it's too loud. Okay, I don't want to screw around anymore. So thank you for joining. Um, we're going to be here for about an hour. It's only 7.01, so pretty cool. I think I'll be able to actually follow the live stream down here. I got a little bit better set up this time. At least I think it's better. So far it hasn't been, but uh, it seems like it's going to be better. So. Uh, with that, hopefully I'll get a little interaction here. Josh is going to be in the comments. He'll answer questions if you need them. Um, and I've got a little bit of an agenda here, so I want to follow it. So with that, I think the first thing we should do, though, is we should bust out a beer, right? I mean, right? So I've got some Cigar City here. Hold on. This, I, these ice packs are not the best idea. I got this one in timeout because it got dropped before the live stream started, so we don't want to open that up. But this is just a lager that I've got here from local Cigar City over in Tampa. Uh, if you don't know why Tampa's the cigar city, look it up. We just had Gasparilla here this weekend. I say we, I'm not really a, a Tampin. Uh, I'm not really fond of Tampa much, <laughs> to be honest with you. But uh, anyway, we still good here? The chat is speeding. Yeah, I know it is. Okay. Mm, this is like a PBR clone, which I think is pretty badass. So that's what I'm drinking. Mm, nice and corn. Got a lot of corn flavor to it, which, you know... Down here in Florida, you guys, if you ever come down here, you'll find we don't have a lot of, you know, stouts and browns and porters here that get brewed uh, just because of the heat. It's just a different thing. There's a lot more people that do Corona clones here uh, from their craft breweries. Kind of interesting. So happy Friday night. Cheers to you. Hope you're enjoying a beer. I know a lot of you guys are about ready to get some snow up there. Um, so sorry about that. But uh, I was just actually reminded on Facebook of a memory. You know, Facebook does those memories. They sent me a, I used to always post all my pain on Facebook. Ask Jake. When I was like depressed in the middle of winter like this and the skies would be gray and it would be like snowing. And then I had that electric snow blower, the snow Joe, you guys remember, which I actually really liked that. Um, it like broke and I freaking chucked it out in the middle of the road and had to shovel by hand. Anyway, I had put a picture of that up on Facebook and it was this day, like three years ago, I think that that was. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I count my blessings that, you know, my wife and I worked hard for a goal and that was to just get here to Florida and we earned it. So sounds fun. So, um, the rest of you guys, hopefully you are having a good beer tonight and Friday. And by the way, springs only. I mean, if you think about it, you're going to be out mowing in four to six weeks. Most of you, wherever you are, that's not really that long. So let me just look down and make sure we're good still on the stream. You guys still hear everything okay? Looks like it died. Are you there? I can't really tell. Josh, text me or something if things aren't working. Looks like the chat stopped in the control room. So I was like pretty devastated at this point. I mean, I was feeling bad and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna power through it. So what you're gonna see from here on out is I just went ahead and just hit record. The camera shut off a few times and then for some reason it worked. So either way, I hit record and I just recorded as if I was doing a live stream and now this is the edit. So I don't know what time it is. It's pretty late. Well, 940. Yeah, late for me. <laughs> I go to bed at sunset, but yeah, 940 I'm going to be editing. So whatever time this gets uploaded, this was my um, attempt at salvaging the failed live stream. I hope you guys enjoy it. I try to put in a few jokes here and there over by there. Cheers. Cheers. Test, 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 test. <clears throat> All right, well, so much for the live stream. <laughs> um, I tried to restart it, it didn't work. So this is supposed, this is a live stream for me, not for you, I'm drinking alone in my garage. <laughs> kind of like I always do on Friday nights, so <laughs> some things never change. But anyway, I'm just gonna shoot this straight and uh, I'm gonna do it like it's live. 
and uh, then go cry in my beer or my embarrassment. So with that, um, let's talk about what we were going to talk about in our live stream and then maybe I'll just do it on my mobile phone next time like I had been because it's easier. Okay, so a couple things. The first thing is I did want to give a sincere thank you to, to three folks that sent me some nice packages this week. Um, I'm not encouraging that, but those of you that sent that, thank you very much. Um, the first one is Mario Sainez. You, he runs the Lawn Dogs Unlimited. So I want to give him a quick shout out. Trust you, this isn't this is going to be a good live sort of live stream, but for now, got to do that. So. We're gonna have some tips in here, but thank you, Mario. And then he sent me a sweet shirt that I will wear next time I rob a bank. So thank you, Mario, for that. Of course, it's an Echo shirt. So super nice, thanks, man. Uh, next, I wanted to thank Seth Alley, Lawn Care Dad. If you Google him, you'll find him. Um, super good dude. He sent me some really good cigars, nice box cut Oliva, and some good craft beers, some double IPAs. I had one of those the other night, and uh, really good. So Seth, thanks man for that stuff. And then this was a nice surprise. Uh, Anders from Spring Touch Lawn and Pest Control in St. Peter, Minnesota. Sent me a Gary Vaynerchuk book. So you must have been watching the last live stream that I did where I kind of mentioned my hustle kind of deal. So super nice, man. Thank you. Big fan of Gary's ever since Wine Library days. And I haven't read this one, so thank you for that. Uh, with that, all right, next, let me grab my agenda. Make sure we're on par. Um, all right. You may have seen the RGS for, we're gonna unbox this here in a minute. I'm gonna talk about this. This is that lawn juju stuff. Um, but before that, Brad Grossman, who is a viewer, sent me this because he saw, I was talking about my palm trees and stuff. This is also RGS. Whoa, way to go. Good branding there, Hane. And uh, this is the floor green. So he sent me this for my palm trees, but pretty much everything from these guys is based around, it's like carbon-based fertility. I'm trying to still figure out the word tracks to use. Those guys, John Perry and uh, Matt Martin, those guys, they're really good at it. Um, I'm still kind of formulating that and how that sounds and how that looks around a residential type setting and how I can use analogies to paint the picture for you. Uh, but with that, I'm working with those guys, but thank you, Brad, for sending me this. This is going to my palms and I have some plans for this. I've been talking to Matt Martin with this stuff and possibly the dethatch and some stuff that we can do to push some domination green. So I wanted to thank you for that. And then let's go ahead and unbox the RGS here. So this is what we're going to have in the store. I guess since we're not live now, I can do can do a little bit more filmage. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna be selling this in the store. You can check it out. I don't want you to buy this if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't really know what it is. Um, but if you're familiar with the with these products, they have not been available to homeowners uh, until now. And I've been working with these guys and talking to them. And I am selling these in my store now. We got three different packs that you can get. This is not the right way to do this, but. I'm not gonna cut them, I promise, I'll be careful. I just like to use this knife that I got from my buddy Stomp. Stomping you customs if you need a good knife or any kind of tool, ax. Anyway, check it out. This is, look at that, really nice, huh? Whoa, careful, you got a live knife in your hand. So we got, oh man, these guys hook it up. I don't know if this comes in every pack. Look at that. What? Got some swag, Oh, dude. All right, I don't know if this swag comes in everything, um, but anybody that orders from my shop, I'll put the link in the description below. I'm not gonna send you this, but I will send you some thrower down stickers. So that's our little incentive. If you buy at the shop, you buy this stuff, we'll send you a thrower down sticker. Um, wow, I feel much better doing non-live stuff. Anyway, all right, so with that, uh, yeah, that's not gonna work. Uh, anyway, so I want to show you, I'll, I'll pull the swag out later. That's super sweet. Thanks guys, that badass stuff. Now I want to show you though, this is the biostimulant pack. Bottle popper. Well, they know what I like, don't they? This is the biostimulant pack. So you can order this exact pack off the website. Again, if you don't know how to use these products, you're not going to hurt anything, honestly, but I'm not telling you to go buy them yet. I'm going to do videos around this stuff. We're going to learn it together. We're going to work on it together. So if you're somebody that's kind of like chill, you're brand new, there's tons of tips here. You still got to do the basics. You got to lay down the groundwork and the basics, we've been, which we've been teaching, what I call hybrid organic lawn care in my own definition. You got to lay those basics down. So you're fine. But if you're somebody that's advanced, you want to mess around, you want to have a good time, you want to read some stuff, throw her down some stuff, you want to spray that kind of stuff and you're not and, and, and you don't have to worry about hurting anything go ahead <laughs> have a little fun um, and I'll be doing this too but 
there's a, some of you that have been waiting for this. So this is now going to be available to homeowners. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. We got the humic um, here. Again, we're going to go over this in a lot more detail later. Aerate, liquid aeration. A lot of people ask me about this over the years. I was like, got to be snake oil. No, nah, not when you know the science behind it. And actually, this is different than some of the other liquid aerations that you may have seen in the past, which I thought were snake oil, which were essentially just surfactants, right? This is actually real soil type uh, builder here. So pretty cool. That's what it's all about. Microgreens right there. Oh yeah, microgreens, baby. No, I'm gonna do with some of that. And then here's the RGS. This is kind of the basics of everything. This is the stuff like, it's the general anesthesia. I don't know if that analogy works. Anyway, thank you. Thanks to those guys. Looking forward to doing a lot more content around that. I'm gonna try to get this up tonight so I won't do any editing unless I look really bad or fat. Um, then I'll edit that out. Okay, uh, next, let's go back to, man, I got a whole table full of stuff. Man, you guys hooked it up. All right. Hmm. Oh, man, that's good. Maybe I'll just check my text and see how embarrassing everything was. Pre-emergence. Let's talk about pre-emergence because that's really why we're here. Um, so you guys got the guide and I got a bunch of questions from you. And so um, I'm going to go over those. I got those here and highlighted and I was really looking forward to doing this in the live stream. But again, I'm not going to keep crying over that. Um, all right. So the biggest thing or the first thing I wanted to tell you is, is that the biggest reason, reasons that pre-emergence fail, uh, there's three reasons. The first reason is, is because you think that starting in the spring is going to be enough. The actual best time to start with pre-emergence or any lawn care program is the fall time, right after summer, because that's when the lawn itself is going dormant and things are slowing down and most other things are slowing down as well. So it's a good time to go ahead and just put some things in, get some inputs in that sets you up for the next year because winter can wreak havoc on lawn. You have warm spells that will start germinating things early. I've said this before, you know, you guys always have, when I was in Indiana, we'd always have like those days in January where we get in the 60s. And I know you guys even have them now in February. Well, it only takes a couple days for that to happen. And shallow crab, you know, crabgrass um, uh, seeds that were dropped recently that are pretty shallow in the soil, they hit that, it'll be 60. They'll start to germinate, right? And then the, and then the, the freeze hits again and they stop, but it's already started to germinate and now you're pre-emergent. Even the prodiamine, if you get it down as early as possible, it's too late because once it germinates, prodiamine will not stop it. Dithiapyr will at the first tiller stage, but don't count on that. So with that, really the best time to start is fall. So that's point number one. Point number two is that you don't water it in. You really have to water a pre-emergent in and you need to do it like right after. I mean, literally right after because the sun degrades it at a, at a rapid rate. Um, and so if you're somewhere like me where the sun shines really bright, uh, you could lose efficacy of your product very, very quickly. And so you, you should water it in immediately and you need to get a full half inch of water. And I tell people, put out a, you know, whatever, if you have sprinklers or, or you're moving them around manually, whatever you're doing, hopefully get rain because that's obviously the best. There's nothing that beats rain, period. I don't care how good your irrigation system is, rain always beats it every time, thank God, but uh, literally. But either way, um, you gotta get that watered in. So put your, put your rain gauge out and wait and see how long it takes to get a half inch. I bet you it's longer than you you think. Um, and then the third reason why pre-emergence fail is because of foot traffic. Um, now here in Florida with sandy soils with a lot of rain, we had hurricanes last year, tropical storms and stuff. That'll wash your pre-emergent right out. It doesn't matter how well you put it down or how perfect you did. It'll just wash it right out. So that happens in Florida a lot. Um, but the rest of you, you know, plant, foot traffic on the lawn because the way the chemical works, it's actually scary. It stops cell division. I mean, cell division is how young plants uh, grow and mature, um, it's pretty scary that there's a chemical that like disrupts that. I'm just saying, kind of funky. It's one of the reasons I'm going for, you know, more of this RGS kind of stuff, right? I mean, let's, <laughs> let's, let's encourage things that are kind of normal instead of trying to chemically adapt everything. And that, that's only a philosophy I've kind of started to understand in the last few years as my wife, who's an expert in um, physical health, she's an RN, she knows all about the gut and the gut biome and she, I, I mean, I, she teach me all stuff. She's an expert in that. I wish I could get her on YouTube, but she's really good at that. But this, this stuff that she's been telling me about, it's really similar. It's eerily similar actually. And I can't wait to make, draw those, those conclusions for you. But anyway, I got a little bit off there, but, um, oh, about the, how crazy these chemicals are really. But anyway, I'm not saying that to scare you, put them down, throw her down, bro. You're all right. Uh, walk out barefoot, you know, just don't eat the stuff. Oh, Jake, the lawn kid's calling me here. Let's just do this. Why not? Jakester. 
Hey, what's up? Dude, it's horrible. I'm actually filming right now. I couldn't get the live stream going again, so I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna, you know, turn the camera on old school, and I'm just, I'm actually shooting the video right now. You're on it. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's not live. I'm gonna upload it in like 10 minutes after I finish here. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, so. Yeah, I was calling. I was concerned. I couldn't see it. Man, right? who knows? I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm you know, get cool, it, but. Set up the pain. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use my older equipment, which is good quality equipment, but it's not probably made for this. So, anyway, let me let you go, bro. I'll give you a call tomorrow, right? I got this I next. I got this next fertilizer stuff, dude. It's bad arse. This stuff is really cool. This next fertilizer stuff that I got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll send you some. Let you throw it down. All right, absolutely. I'll take some. Okay, brother. I'll talk to you. Right. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. So, um, so yeah, it's a weird chemical, but foot traffic. So just playing on the lawn like that, just stomping it down, it's going to move the chemical around. It's going to push it around. It's going to degrade it. It's going to disturb it. So foot traffic. I mean, if you have kids, tell them to play in the park. Your lawn is not for play. Your lawn is for show. The park is for play. Okay. So keep the foot traffic off. So that's three reasons why pre-emergence in general will fail. So let's talk a little bit about um, cool season grass and warm season. I'm going to do a little bit of separate thing, but you should watch them both because they're both um, equally important. Uh, let me just refer to my notes here. Uh, yeah, I got a pro tip there for you in a minute. Okay, so the biggest thing is, is starting temperatures. Again, you should have started in the fall, but you didn't, and I understand, and I did not put a pre-emergent down last fall myself. Um, I don't know why, I just didn't. Maybe I was having too much fun mowing, and I just kind of got lazy, but that's another reason why, by the way, I got the granular here, because those should be easier for you. They're definitely easier for me. It's much easier to cut the top open, put it in the spreader, and walk than it is to mix and spray and mix and spray. It's just not that easy. I don't like, I don't like blanket apping with a hand can when it's something that has to be consistent. If it's something that I can just go, woo! throw her down cowboy you know and just whatever i'm cool with that like spot spraying weeds i don't mind because i'm just walking around ching, 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 you know whatever i gotta do um blankets i don't like so granular for sure easier for us right so that should stop a big blocker for you guys and that's why i recommend those products right there by the way i want to say too do my own they are they have been such a good partner i work with them over there paul and stephanie are incredible um great at communicating with me we, we talk about the products that i want to talk through for you guys um and and i and i tell them you know this is what i want to do is this is this going to work can, you know can you give me some suggestions you know does this work better than that you know just things like that but mainly it's about just having good things supplied for you guys and this is it now the pennington right now they're out you guys bought it all which is cool i wanted to kind of show that that you guys are responsive that way but with that they'll get more in next week uh the pennington factory is like somewhere right there where they are so they'll get more in but they also recommend when you go to the link and you click it they recommend another product that they have that's pretty much the same thing the rates are the same so if you can't wait and you want to buy that other product you can do that and they'll send it you can use the same um uh, spread rates and, and pounds on the ground and everything else that i use in the ebook so it's up to you either way and then they got plenty of the high yield stuff so all right so crabgrass will start germinating when the soil temp hits 55 degrees Keep in mind, you have crabgrass that's deep. You have crabgrass all in the soil profile. Um, not crabgrass, but you have seeds all in the soil profile. So that's why some years, you know, crabgrass is really bad when you have a super dry year and just the ground just gets really dry all the way down. Those deep, deep, deep ass crabgrass plants will come up. Oof, those are some ugly times in Chicago. Like you, anyway, I don't wanna get into it, bad memories. <laughs> but um, so when the soil profile, you know, gets to 55, wherever that seed is. So really, ideally, you'd wanna put your pre-emergent down when the soil hits 45 or 50. So that way you're truly a pre-emergent because again, once it starts to germinate, it's and water hits it at that 55 degree temp, it's gonna go. So. I mean, we always say the forsythia, to me, that's the first up north. That's the first thing that blooms down south. I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, bougainvillea, but they, they bloom all the time. So like, I mean, I'm ready to apply right now, right now, you know? So you just have to kind of know when you're in the south like this, you just gotta know your spot, man, or get a soil thermometer and actually measure it, um, but only measure it an inch down because that's really where we care about. So with that, if the ground is not frozen and you're in doubt, just throw her down. So I wanted to talk about that real quick. Uh, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna give you a couple others and then we'll answer a few questions and we'll get out of here, but I need another beer. So I wanna thank you guys seriously for um, giving me a hard time on Twitter and probably on Snapchat, like I'm sure you're doing right now while I'm filming this. And I deserve every bit of it. And um, you know, that's just how we roll, I guess. But the content is the content.
and I'm hoping you're enjoying it. I even have my glasses, just so you know about these glasses. I just needed to get reading glasses very recently. And so I only wore them in that last video to try to look smart. I actually forget to wear them most of the time and I just squint. Or what happens is when I actually start wearing them like this, then I end up forgetting I have them on and I go like this and I walk around like for two hours and shit's all blurry everywhere. So <laughs> I don't know, man, getting old sucks, but some of you'd be lucky to still have your hair like I do and have this great gray. Yeah. Damn, that's a good beer. I'll tell you what, if you guys just like a good drink and beer, I don't, I, I hope calling it a PBR clone wasn't a bad thing. I called it that before, but man, that's good. I just, just like good beer. Oh man, it doesn't always have to be a hot bomb. You know what I mean? Okay. Where were we at? Freaking A. <clears throat> All right, another pro tip. I always like to use a blade edger. All right, moving right along. So you guys know, whoa. <laughs> so you guys know I like to use a blade edger. I like that for a lot of reasons, but the biggest reason I like it is, is it actually makes a groove in the sidewalk, between the sidewalk, not a groove in the sidewalk, a groove between the sidewalk and the lawn itself, right? Especially when you have St. Augustine, it makes it tight. All right, well, I'm continuing to have technical difficulties, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna power through this. Jeez, man, the freaking camera decides to just die. I think the whole camera is just taking a shit tonight. I can't even film regular now. I don't know what the hell is going on. Anyway, with the edger, it makes this groove around the sidewalk, right? And so because of that, it can it kills the barrier. Plus, you know, it kills the barrier because you're mechanically just removing it when you edge deep. Plus, on top of that, as you know, your sidewalks, they heat up sooner in the year than everything else, and that heat radiates out around them, as well as they heat up hotter in the summer at the peak heat, and that peak heat can get really hot, radiating out into the soil, and it can destroy the crabgrass barrier that you've put down. So what you can do is you can sweep granulars into those cracks after you edge here and there. Don't get nuts with it, because too much you're gonna do harm. Or you can keep a little bit of liquid on hand. Maybe in the summer you do a little bit of touch up around your edges. Either way, just be prepared for some, you know, some post-emergent crabgrass to get through along the edges. And if you're up north, you get a little quinclorac. If you're down here, um, you know, I got some, some weed controls, blindside, I recommend. That's pretty good on crabgrass. So, all right. Next, let's hope the camera holds out. Jeez, it's pretty bad when you can't rely on your equipment anymore. It's pretty bad, but I'm probably due for an upgrade, so. All right, okay, Pinnet Magnum. I did want to talk about that. What did I do with it? All right, so the Pinnet Magnum for warm season. The reason we have this in here, um, it, th I know this seems expensive and it's a liquid and it's, a, it's something you're gonna have to blanket, but the reason I have this in here is for two reasons, doveweed and sedges. It stops crabgrass, it stops everything else. But doveweed is a major problem in the south, and this will stop doveweed. does a really good job against it. It suppresses crabgrass, won't totally keep it back. You're going to need a, a post-emergent um, uh, control factor or a post-emergent strategy there, but this will prevent a lot of it. You get one app a year with this, though, at the top rate, which is what's going to prevent the sedges um, and crabgrass, so use this. So very important if you have sedges or if you have doveweed. If not, then you can stick with the prodiamine and the dithiopyr issue. Don't worry about the root pruning deal. It's not a, it's not a problem. Um, just, you're not going too crazy. You're staying within labels. You might get a little stunting here and there, but there's always a little bit of a negligible risk in everything that we do, you know, a little give and take. That's why we're going on the next RGS stuff though, because that gives us a different strategy to, to go after things. So I want to mention Pinnet Magnum, very important uh, for warm seasons. Now I'm going to answer your questions <laughs> and I'm going to finish up this nightmare. Okay, here's one real quick. This is not that. So this guy here, E. Alvarez, sent me a picture of his St. Aug. 
and he said he got a little bit of uh, damage from blindside. Very common. And pretty much every time I spray blindside, I get a little heavy handed, I get a little bit of damage. Um, if you get some RGS and you spray on that, it's like medicine. I'm gonna start doing that actually. Every time I spray weeds, I'm gonna spray RGS. It's kind of interesting. Um, it's kind of like putting a little salve. I think it's like a salve. So anyway, next, warm season, triple A. Triple A, how can I thicken up my St. Augustine? It's filled with dead grass and I want to dominate. Well, that's just winter right there, bro. That is that is kind of like winter, like semi dorm My lawn looks like that right now. But keep in mind that, you know, grass exchanges its roots yearly. I don't know how many times a year, but roots live and die, live and die, live and die. It's just part of the cycle of life with turf. So some of that is normal. And actually, I kind of like mine to, to thin out a little bit. St. Aug can get unmanageable. And so sometimes it's good to let, I mean, sometimes I'll let the insects chew on it a little bit. I have some disease out there. I let that just run. I mean, thin it out a little bit, right? Survival of the fittest kind of deal. Um, also with the RGS stuff, I know I sound like I'm pushing that stuff a lot. I am because I kind of believe in it. It's new science. It's really fun for me. It's interesting. It's better than just nitrogen, nitrogen all the time. But anyway, I'd put a little of that thatch digester on there. It's in one of the, one of the four packs. I freaking eat that up. I mow the lawn first and then eat it up with some of that thatch digester that they have. Good stuff. All right, warm season, another warm season. We'll get some cool season questions here in a second. Michael Ho. Oh no, my Pennington Pro is back ordered. Yeah, all right. So yeah, I talked about that. They'll have um, another alternative for you or they'll have more in the store next week. Not a big deal. Ryan Schultz, hey bud. How effective is mesotrione tenacity as a pre-emergent product? So a lot of you guys know tenacity. They list it as a post-emergent and a pre-emergent. Now, don't use it in warm season grass, but it's mostly going to be used in the cool season stuff. Great weed control, by the way. Excellent post-emergent control crabgrass um, that it gets and several other things. So, I mean, just a good weed control. However, it's only going to give you a, what, eight to 10 day residual for pre-emergent. So, you know, that's why they talk about using it in conjunction with seeding and things like that. So I think if you're going to use use it that way, you know, in conjunction with some seeding you're doing in the fall, I'm probably okay with that. But as a pre-emergent itself, no, eight to 10 days is not worth it. So it's more of a, that's more of a targeted approach to a single problem, but not an overall like the prodiamine is, where that's an overall pre-emergent. So kind of like that. Whoosh. Maybe, maybe we'll turn this into something positive. I hope my gut doesn't stick out. By the way, this is from, this is Josh's idea. He's trying to make fun of that, that brand Supreme because he thinks Josh, he sent me this. I'm not going to put him in the store though, but Josh thinks that my audience is 18 and watches Logan Paul, I think. So, all right, let's get some cool season stuff here. We got a lot of stuff on, well, wait, here's one of Bermuda. I love Bermuda grass. And then we'll go through the last two years. I've been chopping down my dove weed infestation in my Bermuda lawn. I'm about to lay pre-emergent, but I also want to lay some seed. All right. So we're going to talk a lot about seed because that's where the majority of the questions that we've done have revolved around grass seed. So here, let's do this. Let's change the angle. Let's see if we can give some a little bit different. Whoa. Let's just do that. Just make things a little prettier. Why not? Right? This is the one thing about not being live. I can change the camera angles, even though I didn't clean up over, over there. I didn't clean up. So I don't really know what you, I don't know. Anyway. Okay. A lot of stuff about seeding. This is Bermuda seeding though, because obviously we don't really seed in the South. I mean, you can't seed St. Augustine. Zoysia seeds are kind of non-existent. And from what I hear, super slow growing. So Bermuda is the only thing that typically we're going to seed in the South or turf type tall fescue in a transition zone. But for the most part, Bermuda is the only one we seed in the South. And I don't really recommend seeding it. I, I did it at my place in St. Pete as a complete start over. But if you have like even 15% Bermuda. Look at Matt, what Matt Martin did with his Bermuda. Wild Bermuda, like in his backyard, it's gigantic now. He flies his drone over it. I just want to roll in it. But if you just have even 15% Bermuda, it's alpha male turf. Trust me, if you start mowing it low and feeding it, it will go screw you and it will spread. If you keep chopping its head off, it'll be like, really? You're going to keep chopping my head off? All right, well, I'm Bermuda grass. I'm going to spread some arms. I'm going to flex. You know, I'm going to get swole. And that's what your Bermuda will do. Like literally cut every four or five days and freaking chop it with nitrogen. Uh, it will, it'll, it'll show you some good stuff. Now, the other thing is though, with dove weed, um, don't seed. I'm telling you not to seed. I'm telling you to go with what you have, kill the weed you have and use this. This is going to stop the dove weed. Now dove weeds more what, like June, July, depending where you live. So get this down. Uh, I would look at the soil temperatures, you know, go talk to some people locally, find out when dove weed typically germinates in your area and get there a few weeks ahead of time and you'll be good. And then, you know, I mean, you can kill doveweed with Celsius or you can kill it with blindside. Celsius is slower, blindside is quicker. 
All right. Okay, here's an interesting. So we're going to talk about a lot about seed now. A lot of a lot of questions on seed. Okay. See, this is when I need my glasses. See, I have an excuse to look smart, like for real. And I'm not even using the, the excuse. Wait, let's just turn the lighting here. Look at this. I mean, I had I had lighting. I had lighting ready to go. I, I had the lighting ready. Somebody help me out. Okay. Richard Hall, Richard Hall. I slit seeded this past fall. Should I go down with the pre-emergence like you say in the book or should I wait till the grass comes up? So if you're telling me you, you seeded in the fall but it hasn't come up yet, then we're gonna call that a dormant seeding and the answer is no. The answer is don't use the pre-emergence. It's gonna kill all that. I mean, I, I would not have recommended that you do that because I don't recommend seeding in the spring at all, no matter where you are, guys, because of the fact that there are so many other things that you're going to have to contend with the rest of the year. The best time to start, remember, the best time to start a renovation or a lawn care program in general is fall. Now, you can start in spring if you have at least 25% grass, and this is going to answer a bunch of questions here. Starting in spring, don't seed if you have at least 25% grass. Now, depending who I'm talking to, I might say 20% turf grass or 30% turf grass, but somewhere in that 20 to 30%, if you have 20 to 30% turf grass spread evenly throughout, then you don't need to seed in the spring. You can just rejuvenate the lawn with good cultural practices, good irrigation, good heavy fertilization. And, and yeah, I do recommend the starter fert, still heavy mileage, just freaking destroy that lawn. Just destroy it for a year and just beat the crap out of it with nitrogen and watch what it does. Then you're gonna wean it off slow. Um, if you do that, you'll be fine. Don't seed in the spring. Down south, Definitely don't seed Bermuda in the spring, even though you kind of have to. That's the whole thing with Bermuda, right? You can't really seed it. You can seed it in the summer, I guess, but Bermuda has such a sun requirement that, that if you seed in the fall, even though I did it in St. Pete, it worked. I was lucky because I'm far south here and St. Pete has its own microclimate and we got a really warm, sunny winter that year. I don't recommend you do that. You're gonna, you're gonna have to put Bermuda seed down in like June, right? The worst time to seed, the horrible, just the worst. So sod it. In the south, you got to sod or plug, and I don't even recommend plugs, but I'm getting, I, I'm getting off topic here, but um, seeding wise, just don't do it in the spring. If you have to, if you have to seed because you got nothing, well then you can't put pre-emergence down. And I know, you know, you can use 2% and some of these other ones, but I, I just, I mean, yeah, go ahead, but that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about kind of some basics and that kind of thing. Uh, so. I would say no, just don't seed in the spring. All right. Um, nice. Probably slip on that and fall away. My luck's going tonight. All right. It's so it's such a shame because that beer is so good. Man, I would have loved to drink that with you guys live. All right. I really am. I'm going to do it on my cell phone next time. Okay, Tim. His, his visit. His vid. I am on... You tell me, Tim. Tim? Tim says, I'm in Columbus, Ohio. I need to repair some spots in my lawn. I know I should reseed in the fall, but can I do it in the spring? All right, now, if you have spots, <laughs> I'm going to go against what I just said. If you have spots like that, you can kind of keep an eye on that, not keep an eye on, but that are kind of separate or away or on an edge or in a, an area that you can keep it kind of segregated from the rest of everything else you're doing in the lawn and segregated from foot traffic from kids, dogs, and everything else, um, all of that, then certainly just don't put the pre-emergent there and work on that area separately. And that's, that's why I talk a lot about, um, that's why I talk a lot about Scott's patch master and things like that. That's what that's for, which by the way, they don't sponsor me, but that stuff works. You got to keep it super thin. Uh, when we used to burn lawns at true green, which would happen sometimes, I would always use Scott's patch master, man. I'm just throw down the seed, super heavy Scott's patch master on the top and walk away. Cause I knew the homeowners weren't going to water and it, it would do pretty well. It would keep things nice and, and, and uh, wet for me. So that's what she said. So if you need to um, seed in the spring in spots, certainly do that. Just keep the pre-emergent out of there. There you go, right? That's how you're supposed to do it. Uh, let's see, Ryan Schultz. Did I already get this one? Ryan, did I get you? I know you are on a lot. Ryan says, to reverse the effect of pre-emergent for seeding. Oh, this is a good question, Ryan. Um, to reverse the pre-emergent effect for seeding a small area, say for, for repair is disturbing the soil surface a good workaround. So that the reason I highlighted that, they're similar. So what he's talking about is if I've already put it down and say I get to the fall and and uh, I need to do a, a spot, what do I need to do? Well, you need to turn the soil over completely and I would also say 
water the crap out of it. So if you literally till up the soil, the top three inches at least, and then you water it really well and maybe even turn it over again, you'll, you'll get rid of the pre-emergent, but some still could remain. So, you know, I mean, it's a chance you take. What do I say? Seeds cheap, throw her down. If you got to do it, you got to see the spot. You got to see the spot. Um, I have no problem with that, but that's what you want to do. Now, next. Damn, that like flew. Nice. All right. More on fall seeding. The Mystic Ruler. Cool name. The Mystic Ruler says, looking to overseed a cool season lawn in spring and would like your thoughts on using 2%. Okay, well, I already talked about that a little bit. I don't recommend it, but it is a good question. And if you want to challenge it and you want to try it, Mystic Ruler, with that screen name, go for it, man. 2% is what you want to use. It's not going to disturb the overseeding that you're doing. I would read the label, though. I have not used it in a long time. I don't know if there's other restrictions, but... You know, they, they actually make starter ferts now that have 2%, so I think Scott's makes one. So yeah, go get it. Go for it if you really want the challenge. I'm all for it. Uh, let's see. Here's a good one. Son of a nickel. I like that. My, my uh, mother's maiden name is Nichols, but not spelled like yours. But either way, any special guidelines regarding spring application pre-emergence for new lawns? Just bought a new home and it's got Floritam and Winter Garden just a couple hours from me. That is true. Um, so all of these products say that it has to be established, that the turf has to be established. So if you can go pull your sod and it doesn't come up, then you're fine. No restrictions. If it is coming up, if it's not established, then no, especially with St. Augustine, because these pre-emergents will keep it from tacking down. So do not apply. I learned that with my plugs a couple years ago. Big mistake I made. Don't follow me. That's why I tell you just sod. All right. All right, here's a good one, Thomas. Great question, and these are the kind of questions that I want because a lot of you guys are, are more advanced and some of you are just coming into this. I mean, so many of you tell me that you found the channel recently, you know, and I love it that you're jumping in. So I don't know if that's you, Thomas, but you're asking me, does high yield grass stopper, which is dimension or dithiapir, does, does that product control weeds such as creeping Charlie and plantain? The answer is no, um, it's definitely not creeping Charlie. I don't know if it's labeled for plantain. I don't think so. Um, but I think what your question references is if they're already up. And the answer is no. If they're already germinated, no. No, it's really crabgrass, foxtail, um, things like that. Uh, signal grass if you're down south. I'm not really sure where you are, but for sure it's not going to control creeping Charlie. So you're probably up north because of that. So no, it's a pre-emergent for other issues. However, if you have a lawn that's infested with creeping Charlie, mm, you know, I mean, crabgrass in there ain't going to be a good thing. So keep that out and then work on the Charlie. Joe Swanson, what's up, brother? Joe says, I live in Maryland and we got unexpected snow. I don't know when to start my lawn plan. Uh, I took the temp of the soil. Good job, Joe. And it was above 40 and it may not stay like that. Yeah, this. so I think I mentioned this earlier. There's nothing you can do about that. That's why I talk about starting in the fall. I know it's right, haha, I told you so, but I really didn't. But now you kind of know next year. That's why I have an app there in late September. That's what that's designed for. That's to stop that stuff. Uh, but anyway, that, that September, October application, that's gonna hopefully help keep some of these issues. Now, I'm gonna tell you though, you can't prevent everything. If you get 50, 60 degrees in the middle of January, it's just not a normal year. So we're just, that's why we have post-emergence and other things that we can deal with. And that's also why we keep a thick stand of turf to help when, when things are not normal. But you know, what are you gonna do when you get it, when you get these 60 degree temperatures in January, February, even the best pre-emergent program can't stop that. So Joe, throw it down brother, have a little fun this year. Happy Fuller, good question Happy. What should I do about holes in the lawn left from last year's crabgrass? If the holes are small, like about that size, just throw her down fur, they'll fill in on their own. And that's what I recommend you do. So it goes back to that 25% rule. Regardless of where the holes or thin spots in your lawn came from, it doesn't matter. If you have 20% turf throughout, 25% turf throughout, throw her down malorganite, start a fur, follow my hybrid plan, plan, you'll be good. Don't worry about it. Jackie, I even wrote good next to yours, Jackie. So this is a good question. See that? So Jackie says, I'm a little bit overwhelmed. Don't worry. You're not the only one. 
uh, on what to do and when to do it. I definitely do have spots that need seeding, but also have a ton of weeds as well. How do I successfully treat both? I put down my pre-emergent in March, April, and June. I'm in New York. Do I skip the third and seed in fall? Yeah, so it's all about choices, and that's exactly right. So what I tell you to do is in spring and summer, if you're irrigating in summer, is feed, 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 feed. Throw down the macros, mostly nitrogen. Hit it with some starter fur. Milo, milo, milo. Every four to five weeks, five to six to seven pounds per thousand. If you want to go really nuts, go ahead, but that should be enough. Just destroy it. And I might be talking over over here, and I don't mean to do that, but just fertilize really solid every few weeks, five to six weeks in spring and summer. And then, yeah, if you're still thin, because that's going to tell you where you got to, right? You're going to look at it and go, hmm, okay, I got this far. Well, then you can make a decision when you get to the fall. Well, I got this far this year. You know, I'm good right now. I'm just keep feeding this through the fall, thicken some roots. Maybe you get into the RGS game and you throw some humic down and things like that and you let it go through the fall. Or you get there and you're like, ah, this didn't do as well as I wanted to. I wasn't able to water quite as often as I wanted in the summer. I had some dormancy, some slow periods, whatever. I had some, some crabgrass breakthrough, whatever it is. So I do need a seed. Well, then just don't put down the fall seed. Don't put down the fall crabgrass pre-emerge. Just don't. If POA comes up or whatever, that's fine, but seed the crap out of it. And I have tons of videos on that. Um, and that's what a lot of you guys ask. Alan, if I need to seed in the fall, then can I put the fall pre-emergent down? The answer is no, you can't. So that's that decision you have to make. Do I really need to seed or do I really need to stop the POA? Which is it? And where does my lawn sit right now and how does it look? And again, it's that, it's that decision you have to make. If you've gone all the way through the spring and the summer and you're like, I have good momentum. Things are looking better. I'm feeling good and my mowing practices are down. I'm irrigating. I'm coming into fall. I'm gonna get some mother nature rain help, some cool temps. Days are going to get a little shorter. We're going to start putting in some roots. I'm just going to continue with this momentum, right? It's almost like a NASCAR driver. Like I got 10 laps to go. Am I going to go in and get new tires or am I just going to keep going and keep my lap position, right? Keep my, my position on the, on, um, out in the field. So it's that same kind of thing. You're that NASCAR driver. What are you going to do? Um, the other thing is we are putting down that dimension in June. So if you're going to seed in September and it's been a mild year, that will still linger. So that's why we recommend the double aeration um, to break that seed up. And that's what aeration really is about, is about creating that seed bed. I'm learning a lot of things about aeration that I never knew. Um, myths about aeration, but the one that still holds consistent is, is that double pass aeration does break the soil up enough and, and leave enough stuff out there to help us a good seed bed so that you can germinate seed in the fall. So again, if you need to seed, it's your choice. There's never a wrong choice though. If you think about it, you can't do wrong. You always have next year to start over again. It's like a haircut, right? It grows out and you get a new haircut. So that's a good analogy actually right there. Good question, Jackie. A couple more here. Uh, here's somebody that wants to talk about crabgrass and the mulch beds. Yeah, you could use Dimension, but keep in mind it's yellow so it can stain a little bit. Um, we used to use Snapshot, but I think that's yellow too. I don't know what the uh, active ingredient in Snapshot is, but I used to put that out with a little hand spreader. It used to work really well. So, But yeah, use pre-emergence in your beds for sure. What's the other one? Preen? Preen everybody knows about. Uh, we get some general stuff. Can I rake after putting pre-emergence down? Um, I would not, and that's the whole thing. I mean, once your pre-emergence down and watered in, limit the foot traffic. Mowing is fine, um, but no, don't disturb that soil if you can help it. So do your raking first. Good question though, Paul, Paul Burt. Got one more and we're done. Oh wow, look at that. That's a nice looking lawn right there. That's a Northern cool season lawn, no parking. So that's Michael Bono. Michael says, my question is what pre-emergent and at what rate should I be applying to not kill off my KBG Kentucky bluegrass or discourage rhizome root development or well, rhizome development that will thicken my lawn. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not gonna go into this too much, but they talk about some of these two-way pre-emergence here that can um, slow down the development or thwart the development of roots or rhizomes under the ground. Don't worry about it, especially if you're gonna go on this RGS like I am, it's like a salve, you put that in there, your roots are gonna outgrow any kind of chemical problem. So these, these, chemi these products, I don't like the word chemicals, they're labeled for these applications, they're just fine. You're gonna be okay, you're not gonna discourage anything. Now, if you don't have a crabgrass problem, don't put down a crabgrass pre-emergent. My lawn in Indiana, I didn't put down, you, I mean, go, go look and see if you ever saw me put down crabgrass pre-emergent. I don't think I ever did. I just never needed it because I started that from bare ground. It was clean soil. I had it, you know, prepared properly, which properly was no topsoil. It was just 
give me a finished grade on this beautiful clay, because I love clay, and bring in any extra crap, and I seed it over top of it, and it, and you saw my lawn. So I don't, I didn't have to use pre-emergence because I didn't have a crabgrass issue. The last thing I'll say is if you have a shady lawn, you probably don't have crabgrass either. Crabgrass is typically a sunny area problem, so don't put the pre-emergent in the shady areas because of the root pruning, because in a shady area, your grass is a little weaker anyway, because grass needs sunlight to grow, in case you didn't know, part of photosynthesis. So in a shady area, even if you have a shady grass seed, it still could do better in sun for the most part if it had some, so it's a little weaker. Uh, and in general, those, those turf types are a little bit more sensitive. So don't put pre-emergent there because that's where the root pruning actually can cause you an issue. So there you go. I hope that was helpful to you. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off because it's been forever. So thank you all for your patience. I hope this has been helpful to you. Helpful links in the description below. I'm Alan Hayden, The Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching. Cheers, and I'll see you in the lawn.